go. Good morning, this is Judy from Artistic Artifacts. We're in Alexandria, Virginia at um, 4750 Eisenhower Avenue or online at artisticartifacts.com, Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest. Yeah, lots of ways to find us and, and enjoy uh, our creativity that we share with you every morning and every day with our business. And today on Saturday morning, we have our Facebook Lives that we've been starting and um, we welcome you to join us. And this morning we have Jean Ann here who has been with the industry for years and it's so fabulous I need to just suck up all that information she has in her head. And she's going to, okay, you ready for this? She's gonna show me how to use a log cabin ruler. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. And I'm gonna love it. <laughs> yes, you are gonna love it, I promise you. So I started uh, making my log cabin rulers because I like to make log cabin blocks. And every one of them would come out a different size. So about 10 years ago, I designed the original log cabin ruler. And it was just to make an eight inch log cabin block. And that sold so well, so many people enjoyed it. Um, but then they had me do a pineapple ruler and then I did a hexagon ruler and it's just gone on and on and on. So my latest ruler in my family of log cabin rulers is this 10 inch log cabin trim tool duo because you can, I'll show you how we use the centering squares but it has two sizes of centering squares so you can make blocks These are with narrow strips, log cabin blocks and um, I, that's what I did with my Table runner here. One of those about half an inch. They finish at half an inch. Wow. Mm -hmm. And Great. this is my newest pattern, which isn't out yet, but that's half an inch. Or or you can have one inch blocks like that. And um, or you can alternate narrow and oh, wide blocks. Neat. You can also make a block like I did in the table runner. You can see I used hourglass and uh, pinwheels. And this one has a nine patch. So there's all kinds of creative things you can do. You don't have to make just one thing. And with my rulers, you can also make courthouse step blocks. Same ruler will make this block. Oh, that's a great block. Yeah. And then the same ruler will also make this block, which is what we call the half log cabin. Ooh, like and that. And that's one. what this is, a half log cabin. Oh, okay, block. so here's your block right, right here. Right, and this is your one inch centering squares and your one inch strips. Oh. So it just goes on and on and on. It's a very versatile ruler. So I brought some uh, what we call step outs mm -hmm. to show you how these are made. Now the only thing that you have to cut precision is your center square. So for the blocks I'm making here, I used a two and a half center square. The half inch, of course, is the seam allowance. That's what I cut it. So I also cut my strips. Now you can use any width of strips because you're gonna trim them to the correct size after you sew them. So here's, I'm gonna show you how this ruler works. Here is my center square with my four strips sewn around the outside. And here's, this says round one. You can't really see the markings because they're on the, uh, video because they are marked in white, but I'm gonna put this down and put that centering square right over my center square. Okay, so that's this area right yes, here. Yes, that's okay. that area. And then I'm gonna trim it. And you're gonna trim every row. Yeah, uh, every round as we go. Now, okay. I was telling the ladies I did manage to slice off the end of my finger this winter, so now I'm always wearing a rubber, what we call finger cot, because um, I want to keep what's left of my finger there. So I, I trim two sides and then I turn it and I trim the other two sides. And you can see that when I sewed them on, there were different widths and lengths, but then when I trim them, I have an exact size square that I need. So this would work well for with scraps. Yeah. Oh, I love scrap quilts. Oh, she may have just sold me. Um, and then look here. It's also reminding you about the quarter inch seam allowance, which mm -hmm. I find very helpful as well. Right. That's and my, cool. my rulers are made by Creative Grids. They're all manufactured in Wisconsin, right here in the United States. And they all have this uh, rough stuff on the back so they don't slide. 
That's mm. the best thing about the Creative Good rulers. They they have these grippers we call them, and so they grip as you go. So that was my first. Now I've on this one I'm alternating. Here's what my block's going to look like. It's in a different color when it's done, but I'm alternating narrow and wide strips on this one. Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I've got to. Here we go. Here's. Here's what we call, we're calling them the skinny and wide. So this one, I'm putting my skinny square right up there in that corner. Mm -hmm. And then the dashed lines I can look at to make sure that I've got everything lined up correctly. And I do the same thing. I trim and I trim. Oh my yeah. And then I turn it, line up that skinny square right there and all of my dashed lines are all lined up nice and even and then I trim again now the nice thing about trimming these log cabins as you go like this is you know some days your sewing machines get a little ornery and no matter how hard you try they just won't sew a perfectly straight seam they have personality yeah they the machines, do they do boy. and I've noticed if I'm making a block and it wants to go crooked one time Every time I re-sew that seam, it's just as crooked. It's just there. Mm. So if you trim each one as you go, what happens is that um, you're always correcting in right. each round. Otherwise, if you didn't and every round was a little off, by the time you got to the end, who knows what size it would be. It would be all cattywampus. Yes, and it would. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely be cattywampus. <laughs> and for 25 years, I was editor of Quilt Magazine, and I... Traveling the country for the magazine, I discovered the most popular block was the log cabin block. So, um, see, I've got one inch, one inch beyond there and one inch beyond there. And they were all a little on the cattywampus side. So, having this ruler solves that problem. Uh, because that's what I like to do. And you just keep going and going. As you can see, I yesterday I went all these steps kind of fun um, and here we go again with a half inch trim and trim oops I didn't quite get that all the way to the end probably need to change my blade it's like the shoemaker Never yeah. have a sharp blade or scissors to use yeah. your rotary cutter because. And then you just trim and trim again. Let's show them how this has progressed yeah. here. So, so we have here. There's that, and then the first one. So this is what they do when you see articles in books and magazines where this they're showing. Second. This is what she means when she uses the word step out. Right, so. each one of these steps out to the next side. So when you're doing a demo, you always have to make step outs. Yeah. So then this is going to be my last, I think, trim. Yeah, because I did three three rows out. Now I lost my ruler. What did I do with it? Ah, no. here. Oh, it's underneath. <laughs> it is clear. It's clear plastic, it clear. what can I say? <laughs> So, so where are you lining it up? Okay, so I am lining this square is right in the center. And okay, you can see. so it says round four. Right, and so that gives you your full 10-inch block. Now you can stop anywhere you want. You don't have to make a 10-inch block, okay? And you can see on here my sewing is a little off, but I'm still going to end up with a 10-inch square because I've got the ruler. And that's all that counts. Get that all the way to the I end. I have found when I at least trim my blocks to be all the same size, they work a little better. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that when, took a few years for me to figure out. When you're sewing them into a quilt, it's best that they're all the same yes. size. So, and so that's that. Okay, so now I have a perfect 10 inch block. And really after I've sewn this into the quilt, as you can see a couple of mine was sewed a little bit off, but if they all end up the same size when they're in the quilt, unless you've got a really persnickety person with a magnifying glass, they are not going to uh, to know. Yeah, we don't we don't have them. We don't right. have that. So 
This is so, very cool to see this. When you uh, design rulers for creative grids like I do, then in the end, you have to, I'm gonna just drop. Okay, in the end, you have to have patterns to go with it because people will say, well, what could I make with that ruler? Right. So I have patterns here that go with this ruler. And here's the pattern. I call it this and that. This one, yes. Yeah, I've got some 60 patterns. I'm kind of running out of names. And this is my Rick Rack Table Runner. Don't tell my daughter, but she's getting it for Christmas. <laughs> and here is my tote bag. And you, you have brought that for us. That yes. is very fun. Look at that, that that's a uh -huh. pocket. I'm very lazy. Yeah, this time I use the block for the pocket, but I don't put zippers in my tote. And sometimes I'll make my own handles, but this time I had that white bag handle material, and so that's what I used. That's wonderful. Yeah. So I just finished this quilt, and this is going to be my next pattern. And you said this is with Liberty. Yeah. And, and we have Sally Kelly, who was right. the designer for Liberty, who has her new collection has just arrived in the store. If you haven't seen it, it's up online, and it is in the store. So it, And it has definitely the, the Liberty, Liberty look. feel. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I Liberty, think we might have some scraps from our sample quilt. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, the, the Liberty fabrics are, as you say, very expensive, which is why I've made such a very small quilt. And I made that quilt with the one-inch center squares and the half-inch strips, and I just stopped at four inches using this ruler. But I also have a four-inch log cabin ruler that will also make this quilt. Right. So this ruler will make a lot of different blocks. Now, as I said, I've been designing for creative grids for a long time. So I brought some other samples. Okay. Uh, for instance, this quilt was made uh, also using the four inch little log cabin ruler. And what I found with that is there's a lot of blocks, which you would call traditional 16 inch quilt blocks. And this is your bachelor's puzzle block, which was one of my favorites. So I made four of them and sewed it together into a larger quilt. So you can always get an inspiration for a layout for your log cabin quilts just by looking at traditional patterns or you can do something totally artistic. It's up to you. Well, and I just think it's interesting how it um, builds. Mm -hmm. You know, the whole idea of light and dark. And light could mean, doesn't have to be cream. Mm -hmm. It could be light yellow colors or whatever. And then it offsets this. And that right. depending on how you sew them together, they mm -hmm. piece together differently. I just Correct. find it, it just an amazing, versatile block. Once the block is done, if you just look at it as though it's a half square triangle instead of a log cabin block, there's just so many ways you can put the uh, block together into mm -hmm. a quilt and so but then after it was so popular with the um, log cabin quilt my first ruler sold and sold it was just a surprise to everybody myself included that it was so popular they called me up and said let's do some other things so I wanted to do what I would call a curvy log cabin because it makes sort of a circle if you have wider strips on one side and narrower on the other. So this is my eight inch curvy and I use the K facet fabrics, which they have here. Yes. And made this bed runner. So um, I just love it. And I, I made it to show how you could do a circle or like a cross mm -hmm. out of using this curvy log cabin. So that's another one of my rulers. And then my, but my second ruler was the pineapple. And they called me up and said, now we want you to do a pineapple. Oh, look at these And you petites. know, pineapple quilts are such a challenge to get square at the end. And so I said, I can't do that. <laughs> and then I thought about it and I thought, mm, if I don't do that, they're going to get somebody else to do it. <laughs> so, it does work that way. <laughs> yeah. So the next day I called them back and said, I don't know how I'm going to figure it out using the centering square plan. But these are for sale here in the shop as well. And so... It took me a while. I do my best thinking in the shower, so it took about a month of hot showers to get this one together. And I did this pineapple, and this is a pineapple table runner. So, um, so is this the centering this square? This is the center, centering square, and here is the block. Now, the thing about pineapple blocks, depending on where you put your darks and lights, you're gonna get a different design. Right. So I chose to do my darks going out at an angle from the center. 
and then my light's straight. But if you reverse it, you get a totally different look. So that was my pineapple ruler. Mm. And then after that, we went through a period, I don't know, about five or six years ago. Remember when hexagons, everyone wanted to do a hexagon? Hexagons were crazy, yes. 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 So um, they had me do a hexagon uh, ruler. And that was and is still. Right. Now here's the six inch curvy. The bed runner is made with the eight inch. But they're all marked the same thing with centering squares. And the curvies, again, have both the narrow and the wide squares, just like the log cabin trim tool duo. And you really could make your centering square whatever size you wanted because you have other lines. True. Yes. You could make, and in fact, I have done uh, pineapple with a four inch centering square just using the bigger lines. Right. So once you get familiar with using it, then you can become creative with it and do more than the ruler was originally intended to do. So that's my rulers and um, my patterns and basically my story of how I did quilting. So I'm going to work on another pineapple ruler. I'm not going to tell you what it is because we're sworn to secrecy <laughs> until the release. But that's going to be one of my next projects is yet another pineapple yeah. ruler. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. Well, we've added rulers. We add creative grids. We, those are the rulers that mm -hmm. we kind of try to stay in that line and that lane. And so they, they've been a really good quality. And I like that you said that, you know, there's no slipping on these because sometimes right. you're, you know, as a, especially mm -hmm. a new quilter, you're trying to figure out how to hold a ruler and operate a rotary right. cutter without taking your hand off. And even their straight rulers. Now, this is my favorite because it cuts two and a half inch wide strips and it goes the whole, past the whole four. Okay. You know, if you fold your fabric in half, this is 24 inches long, so you can go the whole way with it. So right now, this is my favorite ruler to use, and I only use the wider rulers if I'm doing borders, but I use those quite a bit too. So, uh, and like I said, the day I sliced my finger, my ruler didn't slip. My rotary cutter, <laughs> cutter slipped. <laughs> cutter slipped because I wasn't paying attention. Yeah. So, um, yes, they, they are pretty sharp. They're scalpel they're, sharp. Yeah, they're, <laughs> exactly. I know. So the, uh, Gina um, Ann, where can, where can people find, um, find you on the internet? You have a website, right? Yes. GeneAnnQuilts.com. I try Very to just, nice site. My yeah. thought is always keep it simple. Mm -hmm. And you have a blog post on there, right? Yes, I post a blog. I usually post twice a week. And um, twice. so that people can keep, I know, <laughs> people can keep up with what's new and what I'm making next with yes. the various rulers. I don't think I've made a quilt without the rulers in I don't know how long. So uh, I just love working with them. They make everything so easy. And however I might slip up a little bit when I'm making the block, when I'm finished, I want my block to be the perfect size. Mm -hmm. So that when I sew my quilt together, it all fits and it doesn't ripple and wave. And it works together and it has that bigger pattern from just the block. That was right. the one thing I really liked about the versatility of the log cabin was you can turn it any so different many, way. way and there's exactly. so many ways. To and do this it. this one I was able to use some of my other little favorite simple blocks, which is the hourglass and the uh, the pinwheel. So um, you can do all of those things with the ruler. And I just use a simple, I have a square on square ruler that will make this block and this block. And then I just use some with the plain two inch order. Mm -hmm. And I was able to quilt this myself on my home sewing machine. I have a hard time sewing straight lines, so I'm, I'm always you made wavy. Yeah, wavy lines. <laughs> yeah. We have a question is, uh, uh, what would be the best ruler that you would recommend for somebody who's just starting for a true beginner quilter? For a true beginner quilter, I would use the eight inch log cabin. Uh, that was my original one and it's the easiest one. And uh, by the way, I sent, they wanted me to, I always have to have the rulers tested when I'm designing them. Mm -hmm. So they sent a prototype and I have a cousin who lives in Tucson, Arizona, and she's a quilter. So she's just starting to quilt. So I sent her the eight inch log cabin mm -hmm. and the prototype. And I thought, well, if Audrey <laughs> can, can make, I, so I said, make a regular eight inch log cabin block first to get the concept. But I said, if she can use this ruler as a beginner when she's never used my rulers before and not have a problem, then I know it'll work. 
And so about two weeks later, she sent me some pictures and she said it was so easy to use. Oh, that's great. Yeah, so that, that made me feel better. I told the people at my developing people at Creative Grids that and they said, okay. <laughs> so I think Audrey may become my permanent testing Test person. Mm -hmm. We also have a comment that they like that the, that the rulers are made in the USA. Yes. Right, absolutely. They're made somewhere up in northern Wisconsin, so. Yeah. Uh, that, that is something that also makes me very happy to know that they are made here in the USA. Well, and, and they're also, as a, as a purchaser from um, the, man, the distributor that sells them, they, they have various information, there's YouTube videos, there's lots of learning that's, that Creative Grid right. supports that. Um, because mm -hmm. as Chris said, I mean, I, I've not used a lot of rulers. And so sometimes you need some help as to well, what does this, what's this ruler going to get me? And we're not, we're more buying rulers that give you multiple options, Correct. not just one single option. Um, mm -hmm. You know, they did come out with the mask ruler that we sold very well, um, but you know, I I need a ruler that's going to give me more than one block. Right, and, and that's and each ruler, you notice, has this little black label. Well, if you unfold the label, you have. An complete instructions on how to use that ruler with a lot of illustrations because I'm going to confess I don't like to read instructions. <laughs> no, me neither. <laughs> I just want to look at the picture and do it. Yes. And I was even that way when I was very frustrated taking home ec in school because they wanted you to read the those huge instruction patterns. Yes, right? and all the way to the end. You're supposed to right. read them before you start cutting. Mm. That's and, no and wonder my clothes didn't fit. <laughs> none of mine made any sense to me on those, but I could look at the pictures and see what to do. Yeah. So I'm, I always include many, many pictures in here of each step and how you do it. So if you don't want to read, if you want to read the instructions, they're there, but they're not overly wordy. Yeah. Or you can just follow the pictures like I do. <laughs> so. And, and also, I think the, the cut loose patterns are nice because they're a single, you know, they're one page. Yes. Yeah. Um, they are very simple. It's not like you have multiple pages to, that you have to flip through and whatever else. And they come already with the holes, so I keep mine in a notebook no binder. And that way I can keep track of them because you know how you kind of stuff things around your sewing room. Oh, never. <laughs> <laughs> or, you know, you're using it in a place that yes. <laughs> breakfast yes. table or whatever. So, and we have several of those in the store. So. They're made out of this nice, they're not paper, they're like a tag board. Mm -hmm. So that it's not going to get all crinkly and wrinkled. It's, yeah. it's very durable. So Kathy Edwards actually reminded us that the uh, QR code that's on the ruler itself if you go use that QR code, you can see a video on how to okay. use the ruler. Okay. I'm not going to get up close to it because we don't want to go offline, but <laughs> they've actually put that on there and the video is, it will show up. Okay, yes. Mm -hmm. yes. There's a YouTube video for every ruler that Creative right. Grid says and you, you just have to use this. I've never been able to figure out how to use that. So I just go to YouTube and type in Creative, Creative Grids, Grids and my name and every video with my rulers pops up. So if you're sort of technically challenged like I am, you can just do a normal search like we used to do. Or if you're more technically advanced, I'm sure the code is easier. Yes. Do you have a YouTube channel yourself? No, I don't. I don't have a YouTube channel because all of my... Uh, YouTube videos are, are are done with Creative Grid. Okay. I don't have any other. Right. So I just keep it all on their channel. But I was looking at your blogs and everything the last couple of days, and they're very, really nice and, and to the point, like you said, and, mm -hmm. and very helpful. So if you would rather read than watch a video, that's another mm -hmm. option, yeah. too. So um, lots of education and lots of opportunity for success. Right. It's just fabulous. Well, I just love getting new quilters started and starting successfully. Because yeah. if you get started and it doesn't work out like you wanted, you're not likely to continue. Mm -hmm. And the whole idea is to get more people addicted to quilting. That's right. That's right. I really fell hard. Right. <laughs> I fell definitely uh, hard the other in love thing, with quilting. I showed you some yes. of the blocks I'm making. When I start to make a quilt, I always design it. Now, I have a Mac, so I can't use the EQ program, but I do use Adobe Illustrator, and I work it all out and map out what I'm making before I'm going to make it. 
That's because I'm making patterns. Sometimes I will simply sit down and sew an artistic quilt, but usually I'm trying to make a new pattern for one of my rulers, so I spend a lot of time doing that. So when I do my instructions, you're gonna get maps and diagrams mm -hmm. and all of that on my patterns. So these are all KFE, right? Yes. 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 So you, te you tend to be very bright in your color choices. Oh, so. yeah. <laughs> yes, I do. And I have a daughter who loves everything blue and white. That's why this is blue and white. So, Ellen, I hope you're not watching because this is your, <laughs> this is your Christmas present. <laughs> but if you are watching, this is your Merry Christmas. Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Now you don't have to wrap it. So yeah. <laughs> well, they won't let me wrap it anyway. I do a terrible job of wrapping it. They say, oh, Mom, just send it in the box. It'll be fine. So do we have any more questions? Do I have any questions? Nope. No. I'm asking if there's any yeah. more questions from our viewers. This design is fun, and the way I have done the instructions on the back, because it looks recycled this and that, it kind of undulates, yeah. is I have showed how to do it row by row, mm -hmm. so that when you're actually making it, it comes out better. And if you wanted to make it bigger, you could use the two inch instead of the one, one inch, inch strip, strip. Yeah. and then you'd get it almost twice as big. But I was in, England and we were visiting one of those old stately home things and they were having and I saw an old old sort of Bargello pattern hanging on the wall and I snapped a picture of it. it was very similar to this I had to make some adjustments to make it work for quilting but I was just intrigued by the thing the uh, positive and negative spaces, spaces fitting together pattern. and that pattern so that's why I made that quilt so our last comment here is from Susan Dykes, who says, I am a new quilter and had not been attracted to the log cabin block until now. Yay! Oh, good for you, Susan. You're going to yeah. love it. Yes. It's yeah. just so versatile. And I guarantee you, once you get started, you won't be able to stop it. You just got to keep going and going. Yep. Now, I usually prefer a scrap quilt, but you can see that in this table runner, I... Um, use just a set color combination uh, so you can do either if you like scraps that's wonderful if you don't I've, then you can use a set i've done log cabin with uh, um, the aboriginal australian pattern fabrics and everybody walks in and goes what do i do what do i do well you can go really big block or you can go bigger strips and then do your log cabin there and it's it's mm -hmm. it, it's just and they all all those patterns work together they all work together when well, there there was another comment earlier that these would work nice in the um the indian block printing fabric oh, and the pre-cuts that you have um those 10 inch blocks those yeah. would work really nice yes yes i use a lot of pre-cuts because it's I like scrap quilts, and you don't want to go into a sh quilt shop and say, I want a quarter of yard of each of those 30 fabrics. <laughs> no. So, <laughs> this one, for instance, was made out of 10 inch layer cake squares, which is why the blocks are nine inches, because I had to allow for seam allowance and trimming. That's, so, good. That's good to know, because yeah, we do have right a number here. of 10 inch mm -hmm. square fabrics. I don't um, think yep. I say that right on the instruction. Okay. 21 assorted blueprint 10 inch squares, which everyone knows later. That, cake, that's really inch. wonderful. Yeah. So I tend to um, lately have been working in pre cuts. Now, this one, although it didn't come that way, but if you have a jelly roll and you cut it right in half, you've got the right size strip to make the half inch because your strips have to be cut a little larger right. than you need. You're not cutting them exact. If they're larger, then you can trim them. Right. And sometimes you can just use a, a raggedy, as long as it's straight on one side, it can be raggedy on the other, because you're going to trim the raggedy side after you sew it in place. <laughs> you're describing my scraps. Too. Yeah. <laughs> totally. But there's no need to go in and recut your scraps. I oh, never wanted to do that. Yes. Because <laughs> it's just a time waster, I think. And you, you can do, use any length. Sometimes I'll chain stitch with a scrap that might be 18 inches long or 30 inches long. And then I just snip it off at the end, and then when I get ready to, to trim, as long as it's a little longer, everything is a little bigger than you need, and when you trim, you can trim it to the right size. Yes. So yeah. it just eliminates a lot of prep work. That's yeah. I don't want to. I don't want to cut every strip to size because it takes too much time. I want to sew. <laughs> you know, I want to just sit down and sew. There you go. Me so too. that's how I do it. I don't worry about 
So you're going to throw a little bit of fabric away if your fabric closet looks like mine. You can afford to do that. <laughs> you know, because if you can make a little room, then you can buy buy more, more yes, fabric. I agree. Which I have to say, being here this morning, I'm doing just that. <laughs> So, all right, are we good? Any more questions? One question is, can we get her patterns in our shop? Yes. And yes, the patterns are on the website and in the shop. Yes. All right, okay. well, thank you. And thank you for, for having me. Here. I'm glad to be here. Yes, I'm thrilled. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. And uh, pass the word along. We're going to put this on our YouTube channel. You can check it out. And join us next week. Uh, oh, it's going to be a surprise because I can't remember what we're doing, but uh, it's out there. I know we have a schedule. <laughs> so well, next Saturday at 9.30, we'll I've be I've gone Facebook back and Life. watched several of your videos, and I've loved every one of them. Thank They're you. all very different and fun. Thank you. Thank as well you. as instructing. <laughs> all right. See you next week.